for the World Scout. I'm currently a youth representative for the World Scout movement, and I'm also the Jota Jota program co lead. So I'm really happy to be here with you. Thank you for joining. We're going to have a lot of fun today, but we're also going to learn a lot of things that's going to gonna be helpful for you. So first of all, I want to ask you, what does being healthy really means for you? So if you want to share in the Q&A, what does really being healthy really mean? I don't know if we have the chat available. I don't think so. But you can use the Q&A. So being healthy can mean so many things to different people. This is why we, when we talk about health, we need to be respectful in everyone's mind. Believe it or not, it's not just tied to physical appearance or physical health. Although many people are quick to assume that it is, many people is quick to assume that being healthy is a meaning of skinny, which is not, skinny doesn't necessarily mean you're healthy and in the same breath. So for today's session, we're gonna take away that idea that being skinny means uh, being healthy, there is no Q&A, so I'm going to see. OK, you can directly send the questions to me in the chat. I'm going to ask to our amazing technical host if maybe he can figure out if we can have Q&A. But yes, I see that some answers are coming up. So being healthy also means having a strong body. What does being healthy mean to you? You can answer. Then, according to the World Health Organization, the world health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. And this includes the use of personal and social resources to ensure an individual can function through their everyday life. So during the session, and I will hope that during the rest of Jyoti Jyoti and after that, we are gonna use this definition of being healthy. Being healthy means a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, which is a whole different thing than not only physical. In other words, if your body can effectively manage threats to your system, you are considered a healthy person. This is important to know. So when I say threats, I can mean physical threats, like having a flu, like having an ear infection, mentally, if you're struggling with some anxiety or some insomnia, and emotionally, if you, can, if you are not feeling right, if maybe you are feeling under the weather, those being healthy means that your body can effectively manage these threats. Keep in mind, and this is something really important, and we're going to make sure that we know this. Healthcare providers are trained individuals that are equipped to evaluate every aspect of your health. So even though we're going to talk about health here, and there are a lot of sessions and static content talking about health, I want to make sure that you know that only healthcare providers are trained individuals that are equipped to evaluate your aspect, your health sorry. So before we continue, I just wanna make sure that you know that taking care of your health is also asking for professional help. So we're gonna talk about some tips and tricks that you can implement in your everyday life to be more healthy and to be aware of your health. So first of all, as I see a lot of chats coming in, you are, you are healthy if you are eating a diet that is well-rounded and a lot of whole foods. So I know that no one's perfect. We know that no one is perfect, but the key is to try our best to include full whole foods and optimal nutrition to daily diet as consistently as possible. 
And I do know that sometimes we can, we like to eat uh, processed food and it's fast food and that's okay once in a while, but you are considered healthy if you're eating a diet that is well-rounded. So our key, the key here is to try our best to do that. The second tip will be, if you can effectively manage a full range of emotions. So often a lot of people think or may think that being happy all the time is healthy. And that's really far from the truth. Happiness feels significantly more wholesome when you feel a range of emotions in between those happy emotions, those happy moments, which means you can feel angry, you can feel a little sad, you can feel like you are disconnecting and that's okay. The key is effectively implemented strategies to manage not so great moments. So the key to be healthy is to be aware when you are not feeling happy, when you are feeling something else, when you're feeling sad or ang angry, and implementing strategy management skills to navigate those moments. The third tip I have for you is that you are healthy if you have enough energy to get through your day and complete your daily to-do list. This is something really important for us to take care of. So whether we are talking about physical or mental energy, you have the ability to focus and complete the things you want to do each day is a sign of good health. So this is something that we can be aware of. So if you have that physical energy and mental energy to focus on what you're doing, to complete the things that you said you're gonna complete, then you are considered a healthy person. The next tip, you feel rested when you get up. This is something important. This is something that maybe as young people, you are not considering that much, but the right amount of sleep is not only essential to your body, but also to your mind. You need to be aware that getting your rest is not only to feel good physically, but mentally you do need to rest. You, know, you do need to disconnect. So getting it hours of sleep is best. This is something that we have heard a lot of time, but it's not always attainable for everyone, which is why quality of sleep is just as important as the amount of time you spend sleeping. And I do know that there are a lot of people that maybe are not comfortable sleeping for eight hours, they'd like to sleep for seven hours, for nine hours, for six hours. And that's okay, we all, are, we all have different bodies, we all have different metabolisms, however, it is important that you are aware that when you wake up in the morning, you're feeling rest up. Your mind's feeling easy, your body's feeling physically okay. And that's how you know that you are resting. Another tip is that you can include moderate, moderate exercise and movement into your daily routine which is really important. Maybe we do not consider that exercise is that important, or maybe we, don't, we think we don't have time to include exercise in our daily, daily routine. The recommended amount of exercise is 150 weekly minutes, which is actually not that hard to attain of moderate activity. Moderate, when I say moderate activity, I mean like walking, like taking a walk in the park with your family, with your friends, having daily dance parties with yourself when you are uh, completing some tasks. Maybe someone on the chat can help me share what they do to include moderate exercise in the daily routine. My daily routine, I try to walk at least 20 minutes a day. So I see a lot of Chats coming in. Some people say that they clean their house as a daily moderate exercise. That's okay. You can also have a dance party there. A lot of people tell I take walks with my friends. Yes. I tend to use my bicycle to go to school. Amazing. 
What else can you do? You can drop it. I played badminton two times a day. That's incredible. What else do you do to include exercise in your daily routine? You can directly message me on the chat and I will read your answers. So I see that there are a lot of coming in. I walk through my, through my school. I walk to my house. I walk very fast every time I have to go somewhere. That's amazing too. Push-ups. Okay, that's something that I do really want to include on in my daily routine, but I'm not that good at push-ups. I go to the gym, I practice martial arts, I practice, oh, I don't know how to say that, but Coopera Angola, sit-ups. I see that, that a lot of people are active, which is amazing. Let's not forget that being active doesn't really mean that you need to go to a gym. As we are saying, you can walk fast, you can walk with your friends, you can have daily parties. The other tip is asking for help. And I want to make sure that we do a highlight on this part because there are many reasons to visit a primary care doctor. The more obviously, of course, is when you are feeling unwell physically. This could be due to a full flu season because we all get flu, ear infection, allergy, potential sprain, a variety of non-emergency reasons. So when you are feeling physically, you are not feeling good, it is recommended that you go to a professional, that you understand that only professional healthcare providers are the ones allowed to tell you whether you need to take some medication, whether you need to include something else on your diet. And now on, I know that as we were saying, primary care doctors are often the first professionals that we tend to see. They're often the first one when we said that we are having symptoms related to depression, to anxiety, to insomnia, but they are not able to provide in-depth consulate that is needed in this kind of issues. Looking for mental health, looking for your mental health is complex because it often involves processes in your brain that only mental health providers can understand and can help you navigate through these times. So I wanted to make a pause here to tell you that it's okay not to be okay. Not only physical symptoms are managed through a doctor, there are a lot of different kinds of doctors. So if you're feeling like maybe today or maybe during the last month, you were not able to rest well or you are, feel a little anxious, you're eating too much because you are not feeling well rested. It's okay to look for help. It's okay to look for professional help on the mental health. And it's okay to talk about it. So we are opening this kind of conversation about healthy lifestyles, about mental health, during Jota Jotty and during World Scouting educational part, because it is okay for you to say that you are not feeling okay that you may need some more rest, that you may need to be away for a moment. It's okay to take breaks. And I wanted to mention that here because it is important to, get, to seek professional help. Yes, we are receiving a lot of information and we have great sessions on Jota Jotty about this. And you're gonna get counseling for your friends of your family, but looking for professional help, professional Help is key to feeling better and to understand what's happening to your body. Now, let's see. So now that we have some tips, what do you think you can do to improve your health? So let me know in the chat, after all these tips about eating well, adding exercise to your diet, dressing up well, taking mental breaks. What do you think you can do to include a healthy choices to your daily day routine? I see that a lot of answers are coming up. That's great. I will start riding my bike to school. That's amazing. I think I will start eating more fruits. That's something that you definitely can manage. 
I will start walking through to my school instead of taking the bus. I see a mental health professional. That's great. And that's really great to, to, to say too. More outdoor activities. As scouts, we love outdoor activities. So I'm pretty sure that everyone here is, is feeling that they need outdoor activities. A lot of jumping the rope. That's great. That's a great exercise. I will start listening to music and more outdoor activities. I will prioritize health over work. And I think that's very important. And prioritizing yourself is key to being healthy and is key to feeling good. I will take more breaks on school, on work, and I will accept when I want to be alone and just watch a movie. All the answers are great. I have prepared for you some call to action. So what you can do now to start your healthy lifestyle, first of all, is having self-awareness. What do I mean when I say self-awareness? First, you need to understand your body. And this whole presentation is about that. Understand what your body needs, understand how you are feeling, trying to understand the emotions that you're having and embracing them is key to understand what your body wants. Being self-aware also means that you know when you need to ask for help, you know when you need to drink some water to, as a lot of people are saying on the chat, to eat a little bit more healthy. When your body's asking for exercise, when your body's asking for physical activity, when you are at work, when you're spending too much time on screen time, you need to take breaks. Yes, I see that a lot of people are saying, for me, self-awareness is understanding when I need to take breaks. So let me know what self-awareness are for you. For me, self-awareness is understanding when I need some alone time, when I need to just sit on my couch and watch a movie and take a break. Self-awareness for, for our friends here is also eating better. Understand that not only processing food is delicious, I can also eat fruit and vegetables. Yes. Understand when I need to take more naps and rest well, that's okay too, that's self-awareness. Understand that not every day I had the energy to do exercise. That's also self awareness too. The other call to action here is that you need to take care of yourself. We usually tend on the healthy part, we grow up thinking that only our parents are the ones in charge of it, taking care of our health. Because of course we are young, we are young kids and we are the ones our parents are the ones dragging us to the doctor, giving us our healthy diet and making sure we do exercise. However, it's our responsibility also to take care of ourselves, which means I will see that if I'm doing exercise through my week, I will see that if I'm understanding my emotions, if I'm understanding how I'm feeling and how I manage my emotions, I, I will take care of my resting schedule, which means that I won't see a Netflix series for 12 hours straight. I will take some rest and I will take some naps. I will start eating better. Maybe I don't like too much vegetables, but I understand that I need to take care of myself and I do need the vitamins. I do need to eat my greens. So taking care of yourself and prioritizing you, it's the most important part of being healthy. Then we have advocate. Advocacy on health is not a common topic for young people because fortunately young people, in most cases we are, thankfully we are healthy. So we, we think that we don't need to advocate for health that we don't need to talk about it, but it is important to advocate for what we need. It is important to advocate for the health of others. 
if we are seeing that maybe one of our friends is not feeling good, maybe one of our friends or family is feeling under the weather, they are not really eating right. We see that some coworkers or some friends at our school, they are not drinking water at all. Then we need to advocate for them. We need to seek for help and ask them if they're feeling right. So mostly being scout and help others. Um, another call to action I want to talk to you about is the impact in your community. And before I start talking about how you can impact your community through health, I want to see some answers on the chat. How, can, how do you think you can impact your community through health? So let's see the answers. Yes, I see that planning trees. That's a way on impacting your community, not only on the environmental side, but also having a outdoor activity, also, also connecting with friends. So planting trees is a way of advocating for health too. Be kind. I love that uh, answer because being kind, it also means that you can help someone by just being kind. Maybe someone is having a bad day and you are being kind to them, so you're helping them. Doing morning walks with my community, that's perfect. Maybe you can organize a morning walk with everyone in your community. Take shorter showers. Okay, that's perfect. Do informative webinars like this. And that's an amazing example because you are advocating and you are teaching and you're helping your community to learn about healthy lifestyles. What else? What else can you do to engage your community in a healthy lifestyle? I see that engaging your school effort to encourage healthy practices and habits. That's amazing. Education is key to everything that we do. So help our community learn and educate members of our community about all of this, all of the things we're talking about is key. I will do self, mental self-awareness webinars. Great. Taking some picnics, community, organizing some community picnics with healthy food. Amazing, starting community exercise groups like BP exercise. I have always loved BP exercise and that's a really nice idea. What else can you do to engage your community? I see organized spiritual activities and that's amazing because as we said, uh, being healthy is not only about physical or mental, but it's also being connected with your, with your mind and your body. So a spirituality is a great and important part of health. What else can you do? I see, I will start a walking business. So I see a lot of entrepreneurs here. That's amazing. I will teach my friends to prioritize health over work, advocating with your friends, environmental awareness, starting community groups. I see that there are a lot of options to engage your community. And on this, on the advocate and engaging your community part, I wanted to make sure that we know that health is a great way to advocate. Health has a lot of ways to impact your community and you can do a lot. I see that locally growing our food. We have a session especially for that. So impacting your community is about what you want to do, what you want to change in your community. And the last call to action I have for you on this is I invite you to share your story, whether it's your story that you were not feeling good and you seek for help, or whether you want to share what you are doing to make a healthy lifestyle choices, whether you impact, you did a community engaged project and you want to share your story, or you saw someone doing something on your community that inspire you to take some actions. So sharing is caring. 
So every time you share your story, especially on the health part, every time you share your story, you may inspire someone else either to take action to take care of themselves, to be more self-aware of their healthy lifestyle, to take action in their community, or to keep the advocacy part going. So I have a challenge for you. Today, if you have, if you can, let's see. We have a lot of participants on the webinar. So let's share in our social media what you do to stay healthy. So either you have a nice meal today, or you drink a whole glass of water, or you take a break from Jota Jotti on your screen and you go for a walk, or you go to a professional care. So let's share today on our social media what you are doing right now to take care of your health. So whenever you are sharing your story, you can tag Jota Jotti on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter. You can also tag World Scouting and you can use the hashtag Scouts. And that means we are gonna inspire so many more young kids, so many young people, and even adults to start taking care of their health, to start being aware of themselves. So I will open the Q&A to see if you have some questions. Before that, I have the challenge code because I know that a lot of you are, were asking for it. So the challenge code is this one. And let's start on the Q&A part. Does anyone have some questions? You can drop the questions on the chat. It will go directly to me. Okay, I see the first one. Where can I share my story? That's amazing. So where can you share your story? Great question. You can share your story in our SDG Hub, which is just the web page that I showed. We actually had, have a session on static content video on Jota Jotti that's called Scouts for SDGs. You can look more and learn more how to share your story on SDG Hub. You can also use your social media platforms you can share your story by telling your friends, by telling your family. Let's see if we have some more questions. You can use the chat. Do I really need eight hours of sleep? I may not have time, but I, I only sleep six hours and I feel rested. And if you are feeling rested, I, it's okay. Maybe we don't, you don't have the time to take eight hours. Can you please tell me the definition of health? Yes, we can actually go to the definition of health that we use at the beginning of the presentation. So we agree that health the world health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. And this includes the use of personal and social resources to ensure an individual can function through their everyday lives. Let's see if we have some other questions. What can you do? I'm seeing that they want the code. What can I do to take care of my mental health? So being aware of your mental health is the first step to take care of that. First, I will say that you can seek professional help. You can also talk to your friends. You can also take some breaks, but I will definitely recommend seeing a professional. As a scout, what can I do for, for a community to promote health? So that's a really nice question. So we were talking about, we can promote health by advocating about the importance, by teaching people work and that they seek for professional help. For example, knowing well where the public healthcare centers are and directing people to there, telling people that we need to seek for professional help, organizing plant trees, organizing webinars, organizing mental health campaigns. So I don't see any more questions. I think we're good to go. 
So thank you so much for joining our session today. Before we go, I we really need, I would really want to thank our host, Alfredo, that helped us during the entire session. I see that a lot of people are asking for the code, so I'm gonna share the code on the chat. So thank you so much again. And remember that self-awareness is the first step to take care of your health. Thank you for joining today. So I will let you go with some music so we can start our daily, daily exercise. And I think we're good to go, Alfredo. Thank you everyone for joining. I'm in the tonight. So watch me bring the fire, set the night light. Shoes on, get up in the morning, cup of milk, let's rock and roll. Kink out, kick the drum, rolling on like a rolling stone. Sing song when I'm walking home, jump up to the tablet brown.